afternoon, uh, colleagues from Ethiopia, and good morning, uh, co colleagues from Latin America, Colombia, and Honduras. This is the 11th web webinar of Ethio Latin Coffee Community of Practice. Uh, we will deal today research insights and sustainable practices in non timber forest products in the Yayu Coffee Forest Biosphere Reserve. This, this, this is in line with the project uh, Women Coffee and Climate, Women's Empowerment for Socioeconomical Resilience of Coffee Value Chain Against Climate Change in Ethiopia, as you can see displayed in the screen. So the objective of today's uh, webinar presentation is to share the latest research findings on ethnomycology and the inside is significance of wild mushrooms within the Yayu Coffee Biosphere Forest Reserve to present a socioeconomic assessment of non timber forest products in the Yayu Coffee Forest Biosphere Reserve, highlighting their impact on local communities to increase awareness and understanding of Ethiopian cardamom as an underutilized non timber forest product in the Yayu Coffee Forest Biosphere Reserve. And finally, to foster a dialogue among stakeholders about the potential for sustainable utilization and conservation of non-timber forest products in the region. For this, uh, we have we will have two sessions and three presentations. In the first session, we will have two presentations. The first, as you can see, the first in the first session, uh, the first presentation will be ethnomycology and wild mushrooms in Yayu. Coffee Biosphere Forest Reserve, Southwest Ethiopia, 20 minutes to be presented by Dr. Tatek Dejeni from Ethiopian Forestry Development. And the next presentation will be socioeconomic assessment of non timber forest products in Yayu Coffee Forest Biosphere Reserve. Again, 20 minutes to be presented by Dr. Jonas Johannes. Then we will follow questions and answers. And the next session, the section session two, will, we will have one presentation that is Ethiopian cardamom, the most underutilized non timber forest product in Yayu Coffee Forest Biosphere Reserve, will be presented by Dr. Jonas Johannes. Then we'll have questions and answers or discussion part. So, with this, uh, we can we'll, uh, start the presentations. The, pres the first presenter. Uh, will be Dr. Tatak Dajene, uh, Ethnomycology and Wild Mushrooms in Yayu Coffee Biosphere Reserve. Dr. Tatak Dajene is senior researcher in Ethiopian forestry uh, development. He is a PhD in conservation and sustainable utilization of forest systems, specialization in mycology from University of Valladolid, Spain. He has two MSCs in mycology and in general forestry, a BSc as well. Now, uh, we, I will give a floor for Dr. Tatak Dejeni to present uh, his presentation, It's on Mycology and Wild Mushroom in Yayu Coffee Forest. Dr. Tatak, you have 20 minutes and the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as Dr. Wallam said, my name is Tatak Dejene. I'm from Ethiopian Forestry Development. So in this uh, presentation, I'm going to speak on uh, the ethnomycology and wild mushroom in Yayu coffee foresters. Uh, this work was done in southwestern uh, Ethiopia. So this uh, underlined uh, the presentation, my, my presentation uh, this time. Uh, just to give you uh, a brief introduction about uh, mushroom and the importance of this study. As we all know that uh, mushrooms are uh, important components of uh, the forest uh, ecosystem. So when we say they are important in the forest ecosystems, uh, because they play a major ecological role in the forest uh, ecosystems, uh, for example, we consider as a, a decomposers because they uh, they use dead plant materials and uh, animals uh, so that they decompose these organic materials in order to change 
uh, important elements to the forest uh, soil so that they can play important role uh, in the nutrient cycling of the forest uh, ecosystems I mean the forest soils and also they form a symbiotic association uh, with higher uh, plants in which both the plants and also the mushrooms can be uh, benefited when when I say they can be benefited for example the this symbiotic association uh, of the, uh, the 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 mushroom with the plant they uh, provide, I mean, they avail nutrients uh, and water uh, for the plants from from uh, from the soil, and they can also benefit uh, from the plants uh, because the plant can uh, make the carbohydrates so that they can make the use of these carbohydrates for their growth and uh, survival. So that they can uh, mutually uh, benefit in these uh, forest uh, ecosystems. Apart from this ecological uh, function, uh, mushrooms are also important socioeconomically because they can be used as a human uh, food uh, and also a medicine for uh, human beings. So that they can uh, also contribute uh, socioeconomically uh, for the local people who are uh, dependent on the forest resources for their uh, life. Uh, would. Despite all these ecological and economic uh, benefits, uh, the, 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 the mushrooms or the wild mushrooms are the most neglected uh, non-timber forest products uh, in Ethiopia, and they are not even included in the biodiversity uh, database of uh, the country. Because of that, their representations in the literature is also uh, minimal. However, understanding of uh, these resources from the forest systems and also their utilizations or their benefit for the local uh, people uh, can be uh, important because the rural communities have a wealth of traditional knowledge related to related uh, to uh, valuable mushrooms, including the edible medicinal uh, use and 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 their uh, ecology. So understanding understanding the indigenous knowledge that is related to wild mushrooms uh, <clears throat> from the local people helps us to uh, enhance our understanding of uh, the dynamic relationship between humans and their environment. This helps us to easily identify and categorize and also to make utilization of these resources that uh, we have in the country. And also in addition to this, uh, under, I mean the indigenous knowledge relation uh, to uh, uh, the environment or uh, the forest resources uh, that we have uh, in our uh, country helps us to harmonize human activities uh, with nature so that promoting it can uh, promote uh, sustainable resource management and uh, utilization and also the preservation of these uh, resources for uh, the future uh, uh, generation. So based on this uh, understanding, we formulated the following uh, general uh, objective for this study. The general objective is to evaluate the ethnomycological knowledge of the local community and to record the fungal diversity within the natural habitats of the Yayu uh, coffee forest. And this general objective was assessed through the following three specific objectives. The first one is to identify valuable wild mushroom species in Yayu uh, coffee forests and to document the use value of wild mushrooms among the local uh, communities in the study area and also to evaluate the status of wild mushrooms and to identify their uh, main traits uh, in order to facilitate their uh, conservation and development uh, in the study uh, area. So the study was conducted in Yayu uh, coffee forest biosphere uh, area and the study covered uh, six waradas, namely the uh, Alegash, uh, Bilonopa, Torra, Dorani, Kurumu, uh, and Yayu uh, forests. So for this study uh, purpose, we did uh, two uh, main activities. The first one is the ethno uh, mycology uh, survey. This survey uh, mainly involved women. That means about 80% of the individuals involved in this uh, survey were uh, women. So for the purpose, we did household interview that involved about 1,189 uh, households. 
uh, and we did a key informant interview that involved 20 uh, elders. And we did finally a focus group discussion, uh, three groups in each uh, Warada. And these uh, three groups constitute about eight to uh, 10 uh, individuals. After the ethnomycological survey, uh, we did a wild mushroom uh, survey uh, from the forest in the study area. So for this purpose, we established uh, sample plots uh, 20, I mean, uh, 50 meter by two meters for uh, sporocarpus sampling. So the sporocarpus sampling was uh, conducted uh, during uh, the rainy season for 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 one uh, for one year. So after this, uh, so after doing this, uh, the main findings from uh, our study was from the mycological survey we uh, collected a total of 51 wild uh, mushrooms, and among these, uh, about 21 species were uh, ca categorized as uh, edible uh, edible uh, species. We have got uh, important wild mushroom species like uh, the, uh, as you can see from the picture, like a macrolopeta uh, species that is uh, edible and most preferred by the local communities in the study area. And also we have got a scrolloderma uh, type of species, uh, which is ectomycorrhizal species that is important for the, the uh, mycorrhizal relation I mean, the uh, mutual relationship of uh, the plants and the fungus. And we have got also this kind of uh, species, which is called Tylophilus, which we characterize as a bio, uh, as a high biomass producer species, and which is also uh, edible species. And more importantly, this species also ectomycorrhizal uh, species. We have found a number of different uh, saprophytic type of species here you can see the agro i mean agaricus types of species that uh, can be cultivated uh, artificially using a locally uh, available uh, materials and they are also edible species and uh, we have uh, we have got also uh, different types of uh, poisonous species like lopiota species as you can see so these are some of the main uh, taxa that we uh, found uh, from the foresters these taxas are important ecologically and also socioeconomically because of their edibility. I mean, they can be used for edible purpose as well as for medicinal uh, purpose. From the ethnomycological uh, survey, the first thing that we uh, assessed is the knowledge uh, of the local community uh, about wild mushroom. So from this, uh, for this purpose, we uh, we prepared uh, a card like uh, this, like this, the, the card that you see uh, in the picture, so that we try to show the local communities during the survey and to identify which species they know locally. So from this study, we, we found that there were significant differences uh, in the aggregate knowledge of mushrooms by the respondents. And the majority uh, could able to uh, identify and label at least a minimum of five uh, species. And also uh, of the total uh, individuals interviewed uh, for ethnomycological survey, about 24% don't differentiate mushrooms. That means their knowledge to uh, mushroom uh, is, is, uh, is minimal. And most importantly, we found that uh, gender appeared to have a significant uh, on mushroom knowledge. So most women, that means about 20, uh, I mean 61 percent, could have ability to identify and label, label mushroom as compared to the men that we uh, investigate uh, in the study area. And most into, uh, interestingly, the local communities has established uh, a comprehensive uh, ethno uh, taxonomy for specific species. As you can see, for about seven or eight species, they have their own uh, local uh, taxonomy for uh, the different species. For example, they call uh, chome the, for, for those termitomycetes species. Uh, and this, uh, the word chome usually applied for those uh, edible species and most preferred by the local uh, communities. And similarly, they have uh, different local names for Calvatia, uh, Lycopedron, uh, Macrolopeta, Agaricus, uh, Lytiporus, uh, and uh, Psilocybe uh, species, as you can see uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the slide. 
As to the mushroom collection, uh, habitats and seasonal uh, availability, uh, from the study area, we can see that mushroom collection is not uh, a common practice, even though there are a wide number of uh, species and most of these species are edible uh, and the collection uh, is not uh, a common uh, practice by the local communities. But about uh, 80, I mean 52 percent have, uh, have information on the medicinal uh, and food value, but still they don't use uh, these uh, species uh, right now. And very few uh, participants uh, in the survey, uh, uh, they could participate in the collection for food uh, and uh, medicinal uh, purposes. As to the habitats, knowledge of wild uh, mushrooms, uh, it differs from uh, Warada to Warada, but from the survey in, to, uh, in general, we could uh, identify about five different ecological groups uh, or habitats from which the local communities can locate or found wild mushrooms abundantly. And uh, these habitats are uh, the natural forest, home garden, agricultural land, plantation forest, and grazing areas uh, are identified as the main uh, growing uh, areas for uh, wild uh, mushroom. And the seasonal availability uh, and in all the waradas that we did uh, the study indicated that uh, the major rainy season, which is ranged from June up to uh, September is uh, the main season where wild mushrooms uh, can be uh, available abundantly. But the peak season for, for wild mushrooms can be found abundantly is uh, in July where the rain uh, fall is uh, high according to the information that we uh, collected. But most importantly that we could find from the study is Lytiporus species, like the species that you can see uh, from in the picture, uh, they, the local communities indicated that this species has a kind of reverse phenology. That means they can see uh, it only during the dry season growing uh, on, 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 on a live uh, tree. So this is the exceptional. Otherwise, the other species, according to the, uh, the respondents, the other species can be found only uh, in the rainy uh, season. As to the status and the potential treats of uh, wild mushrooms, uh, most of the local communities uh, perceived that uh, the status of wild uh, mushrooms uh, in their uh, area is uh, decreasing. Uh, the only exceptional uh, Warada is uh, Dorani. They indicated that uh, wild mushroom is increasing in the area. Otherwise, the five uh, different uh, Waradas, I mean, the, the local communities in this studies area indicated that <clears throat> wild mushrooms are decreasing from time to uh, time because of uh, a different reason. Uh, among the different reason for the degradation or the decrease of wild mushrooms in their uh, surrounding, they mentioned that deforestation uh, took the priority. That means in, in, the, in the study areas, deforestation is increasing uh, from time to time because of that. Uh, the wild mushrooms are uh, decreasing because they consider forest is one of the major habitat in which they could find a different uh, wild uh, mushrooms. But due to deforestation for agricultural purpose, uh, as well as for settlement purpose or other purpose, uh, the, the wild mushrooms are uh, decreasing from this area. And so they also mentioned overgrazing, fire and settlement, and also disease as the major causes for wild mushroom degradations uh, in their uh, area. So the implication and the conclusion from this uh, study, we can see that the first one is from the study, we can see that uh, the majority of uh, the local community involved in this study uh, are not aware of, uh, aware of for the edibility uh, as well as medicinal use of uh, mushrooms. Uh, so uh, we consider uh, there is a need for uh, education and awareness uh, creation program to promote responsible uh, mushroom conception and address the misconception and the negative perception related to wild mushrooms in this uh, study uh, area. And also we could uh, identify the different uh, ecological niche from which 
very few, I mean, local communities could uh, collect wild edible mushroom for their uh, subsistence uh, purpose. So, uh, in this reason, uh, in this uh, regard, there must be a sustainable collection. That means uh, we have to provide training program should be, I mean, training program should be uh, developed in order to enhance the value of wild mushroom through sustainable collection method from the ecological niche uh, that the local communities uh, indicated, especially in the area like natural forest, grazing lands, uh, and uh, home garden uh, area. And there must be also a conservation effort, as we can see from the study, I mean, from the study, I mean, from the result, we can see that uh, majority of the local communities indicated that uh, wild mushrooms are decreasing, uh, showing a status of decreasing in this, in, the, in their uh, area. So sustainable forest management is a, critic, is a critical because uh, forest degradation in their area is a major causes for the degradation of uh, wild mushrooms mushrooms in the area. So there must be a sustainable forest management uh, for conserving wild mushrooms and the associated ethnomycological uh, knowledge. So efforts to uh, counteract deforestation and other threats are uh, essential. The other is biodiversity uh, conservation. As I have mentioned in the introduction, wild mushrooms are the most neglected non-timber forest products. But currently, if we integrated in the conservation uh, practice or in the conservation activity of the forest systems in this uh, area, we can uh, promote a biodiversity conservation through product diversification because wild mushrooms, I mean, most of majority of the species that we uh, found from these forests are edible and some of them are also can be used as medicinal. So if we make a kind of awareness about the use of these uh, wild uh, mushrooms, we can make a product uh, diversification so that with this product diversification, we can uh, make a biodiversity uh, conservation together with uh, local uh, uh, communities. Uh, and also the, the last one is about the cultivation, as I have mentioned earlier, uh, majority of the species that we uh, found are saprophytic species. That means we can make uh, a cultivation of uh, these uh, species using uh, a locally uh, available uh, material so that if we uh, provide some kind of uh, cultivation training for uh, the local communities, they can, uh, they can produce mushroom in order to use for, the, for their subsistence purpose as well as in order to uh, sell in the local market so that they can generate uh, income in order to uh, support their uh, livelihood. So uh, this is uh, the presentation I have. Thank you for uh, your uh, attention. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Tatek, for the nice presentation and also on time. And uh, dear participants, if you have questions, comments for, doc, uh, for Dr. Tatek, please uh, keep it with you or send us in the comment section. Uh, and now we'll continue with the second uh, presentation. Uh, the second presentation is Socioeconomic Assessment of Non-Timber Forest Products in Yayu Coffee, fo Coffee Forest Biosphere Reserve to be presented by Dr. Jonas Johannes. Dr. Jonas uh, Johannes is also senior researcher in Ethiopian forestry uh, development, forest products innovation training, research and training center. Dr. Jonas has PhD in forest uh, ecology. And as I said, the senior researcher in our uh, research uh, center. So Dr. Jonas, now you can proceed. You have 20 minutes. The floor is yours, Dr. Jonas. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Warren, for introducing me. Uh, okay, I will be on, in touch with the uh, required time. Is my slide visible? Yes. Okay. Sorry, okay. Doctor, can you make it uh, full screen? Yeah. Is it now visible? Yeah, it's okay now. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, just to shorten my title, it is a social economic assessment of major non-timber forest uh, products in the Yayu coffee forest biosphere. 
This is uh, my content I will briefly talk about uh, on the background and the objective of uh, the study. Then it's followed by a method of uh, different data collection we used. And based on this data, I will also present or talk about the primary results. Then describe just very briefly overview of major non timber forest products found in the Yayu Cold Forest Western. And based on all these uh, data and uh, the results, I will talk about the conclusion and recommendation. Well, Ethiopia has widely differing agricultural uh, zone, uh, commonly classified into highlands. These are areas above 1,500 meters above sea level and below that it is uh, considered as uh, lowlands. These diverse physiographic features has uh, contributed to various uh, ecosystem formation, which put our countries, the top 25 by the richest countries in the uh, world. And for example, about 6,500 to 7,000 plant species of or high plants are estimated to exist in Ethiopia, of which 12% uh, of them are uh, endemic. And among uh, the different forest ecosystem found in the country, the, the southwestern part is contain about 56% of the forest cover, which is found in this region. And among the four biosphere reserves, which is recognized by UNESCO, just to show you some of the graph, uh, what we have seen is there are a total of five biospheres recognized by uh, UNESCO. The first one is Tana, which is found in the northwestern parts of the country. The other four biosphere is found in the southwestern uh, parts of the country. This is the area where Yayu forest cover biosphere is found. This is the Kafa forest biosphere, and this one is the Shaka forest biosphere, and the last one is the Majengar forest biosphere. So uh, among the four biosphere reserves, the Yayu Kofi Forest Biosphere, which was established in 2010, was by far uh, the largest in terms of areas uh, coverage. And this, the biosphere forest includes the Eastern Afro-Montani Biodiversity Hotspot and an important bird area of international significance. Not only that, this biosphere also contains the last remaining uh, Afro-Montani cloud and rainforest fragments, which also contain the wild uh, coffee arabica gym pool. Uh, just by the way, for information, it will pay the only countries that contain uh, uh, wild coffee gym pool. And as I have said, this is uh, one of the largest uh, area in terms of its total coverage. It's about uh, uh, 21,000 uh, hectares. The altitude ranges between 1,140 up to 2,562 meters above sea level. The annual temperature varies between 12.7 to 26 degrees Celsius, and the mean annual precipitation is around 2,100 millimeter, and the minimum was 1,400, and the maximum annual rainfall reached sometimes 300, 3,000, even above that. So there's almost rainfall uh, throughout the year, except at the end of January and also in November. And the biosphere uh, classified into three management zone, the core area, this is a uh, green part, which no one is allowed to do anything in this area, except for uh, monitoring and research purpose. Otherwise, anything is taken from uh, this area. The other part is the buffer zone, the yellow part, which connects the transition area and the uh, core area. In this area, sometimes the local community claims uh, so that they are allowed to uh, cultivate uh, coffees and extracting uh, different kinds of non timber forest products in this area. The largest part contains a transition area, which cover about 70% uh, of the area. This is the area where other land use activities are carried out, such as uh, settlements, uh, agricultural practices, grazing lands, wetland, and other activities are also found in this area. The total number of population is estimated about 154,300. And like in any other parts of the country, Agriculture is the mainstay economy practiced by the community. And this biosphere community living around uh, this biosphere strongly connected with it. And in order to economically sustain themselves, they obtain diverse kinds of uh, products and services from this uh, biosphere. And yet, how this household interact with the biosphere reserve, particularly with that of uh, uh, cultivating or producing coffees and also extracting different kinds of non timber forest products are insufficiently understood. 
And these non-timber forest products have been traded both uh, locally and also internationally for a long period of time. If properly utilized, they can be used for a wide range of industrial application, and hence they can provide alternative and sustainable livelihood. Based on this brief background, uh, my presentation addresses comparative appraisal of some of the major non-timber forest products and associated challenges found in the IU forest coffee biosphere. To synthesize our uh, findings, we use two different kinds of data. The first one is uh, primary uh, data, which is collected in the form of a socioeconomic survey. Uh, Dr. Tatak briefly uh, described about this. So in general, we use key format interview, uh, focus group discussion, and sometimes household survey. <clears throat> the data were collected uh, between May and June 2023. All orders that are six in total were uh, considered for our uh, findings. Warada means the second uh, lowest administrative unit in Ethiopian political setup. And from this, all Waradas or districts, uh, three Kabbalists from each were uh, considered. So, so in total, there are 18 Kabbalists were uh, uh, surveyed. So Kabbali means the lowest administrative unit in the Ethiopian uh, political uh, setup. So a total of 18 Kabbalists or uh, wards were considered uh, to make the socioeconomic survey. On the other hand, we also gather secondary data, usually uh, gray documents from government offices and at the same time from non-governmental organization, published reports by different uh, scholars or scientists and also published reports by different institutions. At the same time, we also referred uh, different kinds of developmental intervention were carried out by non-governmental organizations who are working in the IUCO forest area. So with regard to the primarily findings, uh, this bar graph shows you the social established gender role with regard to collection of the different kinds of non-timber forest products found in the IU uh, coffee forest biosphere. As you can read from this uh, graph, uh, it is almost a main dominated activities with regard to non-timber forest product uh, collection, except for uh, firewood collection which is mainly done by women. This is because of their primary concern is uh, collecting firewood to take care of their uh, families. Whereas in the case of wild fruit, it's mainly collected by uh, youngsters. And this is annual income from uh, different non-timber prospectors. And this graph shows you uh, those individuals or interviewers who are willing to respond to the monetary value they obtain from collecting different kinds of mint timber forest products and uh, sold it. So as expected, coffee is by far the largest uh, contribution. For example, 16 individuals uh, replied that they earned more than 35,000 Ethiopian per, uh, per uh, year. And despite the next uh, high income generation uh, source of mint timber forest products followed by honeys and fire also have contributed something in terms of monetary values by the local community. And this graph shows you a proportion of women households that earn cash income by uh, collecting and selling non timber forest products. Except uh, Hurumu uh, district, almost all surveyed uh, districts or waradas, women's replies that they generated some amount of money by selling non timber forest products. This is overall respondents, which also include both men and women about their perception with regard to value addition on non-timber forest product. It's unfortunate that except uh, Doroni communities, majority of the respondents replied that they don't have the required knowledge with regard to value addition on the non-timber forest product. So this is one of uh, another focus area to make or to benefit from collecting non-timber forest products in the IUCO forest biosphere. Uh, this is, uh, uh, we used a kind of uh, closed ended uh, questionnaire to know about uh, perception of the respondents on factors contribute to the decline of non timber forest products in the IU coffee forest biosphere. Well, as you can read from this uh, graph, the factors vary from district to district. For example, in Urumu uh, uh, Waradas or uh, District uh, deforestation is one of the major uh, factors that contribute to the decline of non timber forest products. It's the same as Aligasache, it's also rather, uh, it's also the same that deforestation is a major factor. But when you come to Bilonopa, it's rather poor management of the forest that contribute to the decline of non timber forest uh, product. 
But when it comes to Yayu, it's rather over harvesting that contributed for the decline of non timber forest products. And when we come to Dorani district, it is agricultural expansion that contributes to the decline of non timber forest. So it varies from where it has to where it has, or district to district in terms of factors that contribute in the decline of non timber forest product. And so whenever one wants to make an intervention, it has to be very much uh, careful about what type of intervention or focus area should be. So it's not the same in all uh, districts with regard to the decline of non timber forest product factors. So this is a brief overview about the different kinds of major non timber forest products and coffee. Uh, this by far considered the genetic origin of Arabica coffee, and the Yayu comes depend greatly on uh, coffee cultivation. For example, some government reports have indicated that more than 17% of the population depend financially on uh, these uh, commodities, either for uh, indirectly, for example, production of coffee or in the processing of coffee or in the marketing or whatever. So more than 17 people were uh, depending on this. Usually coffee is cultivated either in the form of wild coffee or garden coffee or semi-forest uh, system. Again, one important indicator is that annual production sometimes exceed 30,000 tons. And with regard to collection of uh, coffee, almost both gender, male and female, equally participated in the collection. However, uh, sorting and drying of coffee are mainly women's responsibility. With regard to the marketing, in the past, the role of marketing was largely done by the women because it, the market was very much localized, but now it is shifted to men because of several reasons. Some of the challenges about uh, uh, in utilizing this uh, uh, commodities, deforestation, particularly conversion of forest land to farmland is one of the major uh, serious challenge on coffee production. It's mainly because of the increased number of population for searching uh, different needs. And one GIS-based report uh, indicated that over the past 13 years, 16% of the forests were uh, lost, which leads to uh, forest degradation in the same time lead to loss of wild population and uh, local land races. Another challenge is the, there is lack of improved uh, production. It is an obsolete uh, technology they use, which is also the same as process technologies, which is backward. It's extremely traditional and hence they are not benefited a lot from or exercising a modern uh, system. On the other hand, this is also another factor, particularly this uh, coffee berry disease and climate change have obvious impact, particularly in terms of uh, disrupting the uh, flowering and fruiting morphology, fruiting phenology of uh, these plants. Market is also another challenge, especially in times of high production uh, time, market will be one of the critical challenge for the communities. The second uh, major important uh, commodity is spices. With regard to spices, the families in Brazil are commercially important in the Yayu coffee for spice further. And the three genus, uh, Afroman, Zingiver, and Kurkuma, are uh, very much uh, well known. This is uh, Afroman, this is uh, Zingiver, and this is uh, Kurkuma. So usually the fruits in the case of uh, Afroman are commercial product, whereas in the case of Zingiver and Kurkuma, it's the rice or the underground stems are uh, commercially important uh, products. And as compared to other non timber forest products, spices are the second important source of income. And with regard to the place where these uh, plants are uh, cultivated or produced, sardan usually harvested mainly from uh, the wild, whereas turmeric and ginger are harvested mainly from uh, the garden and semi forest ecosystem. And with regard to the gender rule, women are a key player, particularly in terms of uh, turmeric and uh, ginger production. Challenges, which is the same as uh, that of the previous commodities, coffee. Uh, it's obvious deforestation and land degradation are a serious challenge. On the other hand, competitors, uh, particularly the wild animals, usually they love to eat this uh, cardamom, so people are competing with these wild animals, the monkeys. Proximity, that means uh, distance, also another critical challenge. This is particularly for women. Uh, I'll talk very in detail about uh, this topic when I will present my next uh, PowerPoint presentation. On the other hand, women's, again, this is focused, securing the primary resources is particularly for taking care of their house and fetching water and preparing food, firewood, etc. So this is again, another challenge, particularly uh, for women. 
And marketing, this is also another challenge. This is again in times of high production season. This is also a major uh, challenge. Again here, the production and processing technologies are outdated or obsolete, so they are not benefited a lot. Uh, climate change, which is, has an obvious effect, particularly the irregularities in the rainfall pattern, has also brought impact on the fruiting and flowering phenology of the plants. The other commodity is uh, honey. Well, uh, because of the diverse uh, physiographic feature, it sustains diverse and unique flowering plants, which enable for large number of bee colonies to sustain. Usually, honey production is a long-established practice in the area, and usually this honey is produced either in the home garden or semi-forest uh, system. And it is a main source of food, and at the same time, generating income by selling in the local market as well as brought into the major big cities. Usually, uh, honey production is mainly done in the traditional and uh, beehive, but overwhelmingly, majority of the communities are using the traditional uh, beehives. And because of this, the productivity is very low as compared to that of the modern beehive, which is sometimes they produce 20 kilograms of per hives per year if they use the modern uh, beehives. And with regard to the gender role, it's obvious that men are the main actors because they need to climb up victories. Uh, to install the uh, beehives. And again, women are not actively engaged in these activities because of the different burden they have at house. <clears throat> major challenges, the destruction of resource business is one of the major uh, challenges. On the other hand, they lack modern beekeeping uh, method because as I have said, mainly they use the traditional beehives and you can find only a small number of uh, uh, farmers or inhabitants using the modern beehive. For example, this one is the uh, Kenyan top bar uh, uh, beehives, where it can really benefit a lot if you can install it around the end homestead, which can also benefit uh, a woman. But you cannot see it, uh, this kind of uh, beehive, which is called the transitional beehive, which is in between the traditional and uh, the modern beehives which was introduced in our country in the 1978, but it's not really uh, scale up or popularized in the region because it can, it can be produced very easily using the local material, or that means wood. In the first place, it's easy to remove the compass so that you can inspect uh, whether the colonies are established or not, whether the honey is ready to harvest or not, but it's not really seen in the area. So one of the major, challenge is uh, you cannot really find such kind of uh, beehives in the area. The other one is lack of beekeeping uh, knowledge. Not only that, there's also shortage of trained manpower, which really popularized in the utilization of uh, beehive by the communities. Pest and predators are also one of the major challenges area. Overall, inadequate research undertakings in uh, beekeeping technology is also another mm -hmm. Mm, gap in the area or challenges. The other one is uh, mushroom because of the diverse uh, plant species found in the area. Uh, the Yayuhur coffee forest biosphere have rich soil organic matter. Not only that, not only the diet factor, but the climate factor is also very much suitable, particularly the mild temperature and the relativity are very much suitable for the proliferation of different kinds of mushrooms. So you can find diverse types of uh, mushroom in the area, which can be cultivated either in the home garden, wild and semi-forest system. So if properly uh, really uh, used, this can be served as a source of nutrition and income because as you may know, Ethiopia have, there is a shortage of uh, protein energy. Not only that, there is a deficiency in uh, micronutrients, which is one of the serious public health problems in the nation. And mushrooms are very rich in uh, protein, so they can be used as a supplement in the, uh, in the, in the normal diet. Perhaps you might heard of about uh, Ganadorma uh, coffee. Ganadorma is one of the most uh, treasured resource, particularly in China, it's one of the most best mushroom used by the Chinese. So you can find diverse group of Ganadorma plants in the Yayu coffee forest, which are not yet really explored thoroughly. And with regard to this area, as I've said before, it is one of the major uh, wild coffee growing area. For example, in 2004, that means 20 years ago, the Brazilian scientists found a natural decaffeinated Arabica uh, coffee. So nowadays, 
a Ganador Markovli, which is used to treat various treatments such as lowering the cholesterol level for the diabetes patients and even for lower, uh, uh, respira uh, lower uh, urinary tract uh, disease can also be used. This is the best uh, remedies. Even in the United States, it is considered as safe by the United States Drug and Food Administration. And yet we do have this resource and at the same time uh, coffee. If we really come up with uh, using these two together, we come up with a new uh, brand which can be break the international market. But we are not yet utilizing it, these both resources, uh, uh, the caffeinated coffee as well as the different kind of coffee. And I would have to say this is one of the most uh, neglected resources which could be used by the communities and at the same time to increase income generation, even foreign currencies for the, the country. And major challenge is obvious deforestation and forest degradation. Not only that, low level of research, less emphasis is given to these uh, uh, sectors, competitors, particularly the wild animals are eating uh, this uh, biomass. Lack of training in mushroom cultivation, it doesn't need a big space, but there is still lack of training promotion. I already said it. There is also market facilities. Climate change has also obvious factors, particularly for uh, fruiting uh, morphology or fruiting production in the Yukon forest. This is mainly with regard to irregularities in the rainfall pattern affects uh, uh, fruiting of uh, the different uh, mushrooms. The last one is medicinal and wild edible uh, plants. Again, this area is diverse and unique flowering plants. You can find it either in the home garden in the wild and uh, semi-forest system. With regard to uh, the medicinal plants, for example, in one of the district uh, study was carried out very recently, they obtained that more than 17 medicinal uh, plants. In terms of their uh, contribution, herbs are by far the largest uh, utilized, followed by trees, shrubs, and climbers. And these plant resources are mainly used for the treatment of both human and animal ailments. So it's a long uh, practice by the uh, communities to go for the traditional, uh, the use of traditional medicines. On the other hand, with regard to wild edible plants, over 19 wild and semi edible plants are found only in one uh, district area. This is a very recent study. And with regard to the most abundant genera, Moraceae and Rutaceae are by far the largest, uh, followed by uh, Proaceae, Proaceae, and Solanaceae. Usually, collecting of uh, wild edible plants are mainly done during the other activities and also in search of uh, for traditional pieces. So we are not purposely go to the forest uh, to collect these uh, wild edible plants. So it's a kind of uh, uh, using uh, different when they go to the forest for other purposes, they collected uh, these wild edible plants. This is a very recent study in one of uh, the districts. So different kinds of uh, plant species are available, which can be used by the local community using the different parts of the plants. For example, this Amaranthus gracia, which is mainly used as a green leafy vegetable, which is a rich source of, by the way, not only carbohydrate, but also proteins and vitamins. On the other hand, this is also the purpleum, which is rich in different kinds of uh, nutrients. Not only that, this is the raspberry, the fruit, which is also widely available in the area. The bush palm or parisia is also found in this area, which really supported or uh, minimize uh, this uh, the major public health problem that we have in our uh, nation. But because we are not really analyzing or giving less emphasis, especially with regard to their uh, nutritional and international properties, are not studied uh, very well. Because of this, we are not exploiting these resources. Major challenges. Deforestation and forest degradation, like we have seen it in the case of other uh, commodities. Overgrazing and agriculture expansion, also another uh, challenges for uh, wild edible and medicinal plants. Lack of sufficient scientific knowledge, particularly, like I said before, especially their nutritional and anti-nutritional properties are not studied very well. Competitors is also another uh, challenge, particularly the wild animal. Not only that, there is a lack of post-harvesting processing, uh, preparation, and there is no storage facilities. This is also a major uh, problem with regard to uh, wild edible plants in Mesa. And market, there is no a formal uh, market uh, for uh, to bargain when they the market. So last, uh, my conclusion and recommendation, on this biosphere has resource for diverse uh, non-timber forest uh, products. 
And obviously, uh, this is expected to increase because of the shifted aggregate market demand for non timber products, not only in the countries, but also internationally. However, uh, degradation, overuse, and associated ecological impact, and the lack of management and market integration are some of the critical challenges we need to uh, focus on. And therefore, we need to integrate the non timber forest products into forest research and developing, uh, particularly effective cultivation. Harvesting and processing method is very fundamental for their sustainable use. And at the same time, if you are doing those, you need also to maintain the health of the uh, Yukon forest as well. Therefore, to do that, a research and development is needed to ensure that the long-term sustainability of this resource, particularly their cultural values, in order to realize their economic potential. So we need a combination of effort based on efficient communication, because this is one of the major gap between the different stakeholders. Not only that, there is poor collaboration by different sectors, networking, knowledge management, particularly information sharing among all stakeholders are very critical in order to benefit from this uh, treasure we have in Ayukov for Spasper. Thank you for uh, listening. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Jonas, for the nice uh, presentation of a socioeconomic assessment of major non timber forest products in Yayu Coffee Force Forest Biosphere Reserve. With this, we have finalized the two presentations of session one. So now we will proceed to the next 20 minutes in questions and answers. So participants with questions can raise hands, and but we have received uh, two questions from for Dr. Tatak for the first presentation, ethnomycology and wild mushrooms. So Dr. Tatak can react. The first I have already forwarded to him. So the first question was: Do you have any plan to establish a permanent plot to collect wild edible mushroom yield in this study area? If there is already established permanent plot, could you briefly explain it? That was the first uh, question from the participant. The second question was, uh, do the local community use the mushrooms as a food? These are the two questions I received so far. So uh, let Dr. Tatek react on this and we'll continue receiving the next questions. Uh, Dr. Tatek, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you uh, for uh, the questions. <clears throat> uh, yeah, actually, uh, when we uh, did this uh, uh, study, uh, we did a kind of uh, survey in the forests by establishing uh, plots, and those plots uh, were not uh, permanent. That's why uh, we couldn't say the biodiversity aspects of wild mushrooms uh, in, the, in, the, in this uh, biosphere area is, it looks like this. That's why. So, uh, but as I have mentioned uh, earlier, uh, in general in the country, the biodiversity aspects of wild mushrooms, I mean, the knowledge about the biodiversity aspects of wild mushroom is very minimal. And also their representation in the literature is very minimal. Moreover, they are not even included in the biodiversity database of the country. So this indicates that we need to have, a, we need to have uh, to conduct uh, a kind of uh, survey uh, by doing uh, not only for one year, but uh, a two or three years uh, of uh, sampling in this forest area in order to say uh, something about uh, the diversity of wild mushrooms in these forests. So in the future, we are planning to uh, establish permanent plot uh, and conduct a survey in this plot for consecutive three or two uh, years so that we can uh, say something about the biodiversity uh, of wild mushrooms uh, from this uh, forest. So hopefully we will do uh, this by establishing permanent uh, plots. The second question about do uh, the local community use wild mushrooms? Yes, in, the, in my presentation, uh, I, uh, I, I said very few uh, individuals uh, could participate, I mean, participate in the collection and utilization of wild uh, mushroom. For example, uh, about 75 uh, individuals, uh, they uh, indicated that they uh, 
you know, randomly uh, collect wild mushroom uh, from the foresters and they use for how their uh, household uh, consumptions. But the majority, they do not uh, use uh, wild uh, mushroom. So these are the questions that I have, Dr. Wala. Thank you, Dr. Tatek. Uh, now I have received two more questions for you. I think participants okay. can can present, but in any case, this is in a written form. The first question from Hafte is why, Dr. Tatek, can are you why the name given for mushroom couldn't be listed as treat since they are discouraging its conservation and management? Yeah, uh, there is a actually, second one, but I will, I will let you know. The okay, one. Let, let me react for the first one. Actually, the name associated uh, with some of the species, uh, the name given associated with for some species is a discouraging word. For example, from the, the list, uh, let, let, let me uh, read maybe. Uh, mm. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> for example, uh, for the Calvatia, Calvatia is one of the edible species that we found from the foresters and the local communities, they they, they call it like Dufanjarsa, uh, uh, that means it's a kind of, you know, this name has a negative uh, association with the species. So this name by itself discouraging the utilization of this uh, uh, species by the local community. So we consider such kind of negative perception toward this wild, valuable uh, wild uh, mushrooms, valuable wild mushrooms, discouraging their utilization. So uh, we recommended uh, that such kind of uh, discouraging uh, attitudes can be uh, improved through uh, awareness uh, creation uh, about the utilizations uh, of, I mean, the use of mushroom for various uh, purposes. So we are going to do a kind of uh, awareness uh, creations and a kind of uh, training about their uh, uses so that we can we can uh, uh, encourage people to use, I mean, to use uh, a responsible utilization of the species. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tadak. The next uh, question. Question. Mm -hmm is in your study, you have addressed some ILK, I don't know the abbreviation of ILK, that can be considered for the future for mushroom conservation conservation, and should be ignored through training. Is That is a question. In what your is study, you have addressed- ILK, sorry, ILK. what is ILK? I mean, lo, uh, indigenous local knowledge? Update. It, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I already, uh, the, the indigenous uh, local knowledge about the, I mean, that, that, that is associated with the taxonomy uh, of the species is uh, discouraging. So this should be improved through uh, awareness and uh, training that I already answered. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Tatak. Is any, any additional question? For Dr. Jonas as well, of course, if there are questions. Any comment? Any reflection? If there are no questions, I think we can proceed with the next presentation. Sorry, I think there is one question from Mr. Abaratus Pai. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, I have I, I have seen one question, Mr. Farada Masarat. How we collaborate these findings with other biospheres reserves because of four biosphere reserves are interlinked each other. This is one question. I haven't seen uh, Abaratas first question, but Dr. Tatak, you proceed with this and and we will see Abaratas question. Hello. 
Okay. I've raised money. I, I have seen your ads, but let first Tatak uh, Tatak is uh, um, uh, okay. Abarra. Hello. Yes, yes. You, you can Good proceed. Night. Abarra. Okay, okay. Uh, yes, yes, but. Yes. yes, we can hear you. Okay, yeah. Uh, my question is uh, goes to Dr. Tadek. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, the, the two presenters, Dr. Tadek and uh, Dr. Yunus. Uh, my question is uh, uh, as you know, uh, in the southwestern uh, forest uh, where the, pers the persphere is found, there are a lot of uh, PFMs. So, uh, uh, could you uh, address? Uh, uh, do you see the comparative result of uh, mushrooms uh, along PFMs and biosphere uh, uh, reserves? Because uh, it is, I think, it is very important to uh, to uh, address the management issue for uh, mushroom production. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Tatek, you can react to it, Dr. Avarata's first question. And uh, the next question will be uh, for both of you. But first, Avarata's question. Okay. Uh, I think if I uh, understood very well the question from uh, Avarata, uh, one of the possibility for the conservation and development of uh, the forest by the local community is uh, increasing the benefit that the local community uh, can be derived from the forest resources, be it uh, a biosphere or uh, like uh, 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 Sorry, I, I forgot the word that uh, Avara said. I mean, the, 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 the way they, I mean, the local communities can conserve and protect their forests. So whatsoever, the, the methodology that we have to conserve and develop the forest, we have to increase the benefits that the local communities can drive from this uh, activity. So one of uh, the, the, the incentive mechanism that we can uh, provide the local community for their conservation and the development and the protection of their forest is the incentive. So in this regard, mushroom can play an important role by providing an intermediate income for the local community so that they can increase the value of uh, the forests and also they can generate income in order to support their livelihood, be it from the collection of wild mushroom during the rainy season or by cultivating artificially these mushrooms uh, in the PFM or in the biosphere uh, uh, area. So by the, by doing this activity, we can we can uh, increase uh, the benefits that the forest can provide, and also we can uh, transmit or we can uh, scale up uh, the utilizations of valuable uh, mushrooms uh, in this uh, forest uh, area. So I think if I understood the question from Abarra, this uh, would be my uh, answer. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Tatak. The next question is how we collaborate these findings with other biosphere reserves because of four, four biosphere reserves are interlinked each other. I think this question can be answered by both of you. And even I can invite um, Aurora if she wants to react because she is overall coordinator of the project. So any one of you can answer. Your, uh, Dr. Yanas, are you here? Yeah, yeah, I'm hearing. Yeah, can I respond? Yes, please. Okay, thank you very much for uh, Mr. Pereira for the nice uh, question. Yeah, uh, as I have said in my uh, recommendation, uh, Yes, these four biospheres are interlinked, uh, not only in terms of their uh, biological uh, setup or in constant formation, they do have a number of uh, common things uh, uh, together. So like I try to recommend in my last slide, we need to have a combination of efforts based on efficient uh, communication, let alone the different uh, 
biosphere, the four biosphere, which are administered by uh, different regions, even within the same uh, biosphere, for example, take Yayu, for example, and different kinds of organization are working in different development interventions, such as the NABU, uh, and also there are the Ethiopian Forest and uh, Wild Coffee Forum, the government organizations, they are working on the same uh, land for achieving the same purpose, but they are not communicating each other. They are not collaborating each other. That's why we need first to have such kind of uh, platforms, that means networking, knowledge management, information sharing. We need to have all these things together, let alone uh, interlinking the other uh, four biosphere. Within the same biosphere, there is a huge gap. So there should be some kind of uh, an institute or an organization which can um, lead to combine all uh, these factors. I would have to say uh, the government office, especially who are responsible managing uh, this uh, sphere, should take the lead or because all these uh, different kinds of non-governmental organization, they pass through all this uh, system first, they have to uh, willing to uh, they have to be accepted by the local government offices before they start any kind of intervention. So with this regard, we need to have efficient communication, uh, collaboration, networking. But first, there should be some kind of a leading organization. I would strongly suggest it's rather the government office that should take the lead before it's really, really working on other uh, uh, forest pathways. First, let us finish within what they have in their uh, regional boundaries and it's possible to uh, extend the communication by the federal state, for example. In this case, the federal uh, concerned body or stakeholder should take the lead to combine all those uh, efforts to come together, to bring all these uh, required stakeholders, including the government office, and just to bring up or to share any kind of knowledge that can be generated by taking uh, different kind of research undertaking is taken by uh, different uh, actors. That's what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jonas. Uh, Dr. Dad, do you want to add or? So, uh, I think to add with the with this uh, question, uh, the, with the project participants, before we finalize the project, we, are, we will try to to organize a national workshop so that we can invite all in major stakeholders of this project and we deliver all major output of the project in the near future. Thank you for the question. So any question or shall we proceed in the next presentation? I can't see hands. So uh, the next uh, presentation is Ethiopian Cordamum the most underutilized non-timber forest products in Yayu Coffee Biosphere Reserve. Again, uh, the presenter or the speaker will be Dr. Jonas. Dr. Jonas, again, you have 20 minutes for this presentation. The floor is yours, Dr. Jonas. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Wallen. Welcome back again, the participants. Uh, the title is European Cardamom, or locally called uh, Korima, which is the most underutilized region. Uh, these are the contents I will briefly introduce about the subject and the objective of uh, this uh, presentation, followed by a brief description of about uh, cardamom or cororima, then what are its uses, and when does this uh, plant fruit mature and collection. This is especially focusing on the Yayu coffee forest uh, biosphere, and what are the pre and post harvest handling mechanism, and what are the challenges of uh, cardamom production, particularly in Yayu coffee forest biosphere. And what is the role of women in regard to cardamom production in Yayu coffee for Spesper? And based on that, I will talk about the way uh, forward. Well, cultivating high volume and timber forest product is a widespread strategy which is used as source of income by a majority of the uh, rural communities. And with, when we talk about the Yayu coffee forest welfare, it is rich in various types of uh, non timber uh, forest products, among which the spices are uh, one of the major non timber forest products found in this biosphere. Usually, spices are aromatic plants that are used mainly for imparting flavor, aroma, and uh, pungency. And among the diverse uh, spice plants grown in Yai forest biosphere, cardamom or corima is high value non timber uh, forest uh, product. Usually, as I mentioned in my previous uh, presentation, it is used as a flavoring agent. And the most significant component of uh, cardamom or cororima is 
used as spices because it contains a volatile oil. Not only that, it's also used as a drug in traditional medicine in Ethiopia as well as in different parts of uh, the world. Usually, the cardamom plant refer to uh, three uh, genera. Uh, the first one is amomum, which is mainly found in the Asia and uh, Australia. It is sometimes called the big cardamom or the uh, plant cardamom. Uh, the next one is uh, elatum, which is one of the most widely uh, uh, sold uh, spices in the international uh, market, which is mainly grown in Sri Lanka, Asia, Malaysia, Indonesia, India. This is one of the most uh, sold world expensive spice plants internationally. And the last one is afoma, or sometimes they call it uh, false cardamom which is mainly grown, as the name indicates, in Africa and uh, Madagascar. When you look at the world import of cardamom in the previous decade, for example, uh, this uh, graph, which I found it from the UN Comtrade, for instance, in 2010, world import of cardamom was above 25,000 uh, metric uh, tons, which injected or uh, incurred about more than 300 million US uh, dollars. And when you look at the leading exporting countries internationally, uh, in 2021, for example, Guatemala is the leading nation, uh, followed by uh, India, and the third is United Arab Emirates. You might wonder how can United Arab Emirates uh, become the third uh, leading exporter of cardamom? They don't have uh, the whale ecosystem to plant this, but they imported the unprocessed uh, cardamom from Guatemala, India, and become the third exporting country in the world. When it comes to Africa, Tanzania is a leading uh, nation, and we are in the 27th, or in Africa, we are the second in terms of exporting cardamom by uh, different countries. And when we look at the largest uh, consuming uh, country in the international world, Saudi Arabia by far the largest uh, consumption uh, of uh, cardamom, usually, they are the largest, they do have a special kind of uh, coffee preparation, what's known as Arabic kawa, or they call it Arabic coffee, which they use mixing by cardamom seed powder with that of coffee. Usually the ratio varying uh, between 17 to 17 and sometimes equal amount of uh, cardamom seed powder and coffee was used uh, to, prepare, to prepare this Arabic kawa. This Arabic kawa is not only uh, typical for Saudi Arabia, but other Gulf nations, such as uh, in United Arab Emirates, and also other nations in Dubai, or sorry, in uh, Qatar also, they use this kind of uh, Arabic, uh, but they do have their own uh, blended uh, type. Nevertheless, Saudi Arabia is a leading nation in terms of uh, consumption of uh, cardamom, and at the same time, they are the leading importer of uh, cardamom. And when you look at the, uh, the country that support large amount of uh, cardamom for Saudi Arabia, again, Guatemala is uh, the uh, leading uh, or they have a strong tie with that of Saudi Arabia in terms of uh, uh, cardamom trading. And this is the latest uh, report. Again, so that Guatemala becomes the first exporter countries in 2001. For example, they generated more than 411.6 million uh, US dollar. And in Africa, Tanzania is improving their position. They ranked become eight in 2022, and they incurred about 1.7. Uh, million by exporting the whole cardamom, mind you, without any value actually. They just simply harvested the cardamom and sold it into the international market. And sometimes this uh, cardamom, they, in the case of Guatemala, they call it the three Gs. That means Guatemala green gold. Like our green gold is coffee for Guatemalans. It's rather uh, cardamom. Uh, uh, their green gold is cardamom. So with regard to the distribution where this plant is grown, the Kororima or cardamom in Ethiopia is mainly grown in parts of its wild range in the rainforests, mainly in the southwest part of the country, which is including here, you could first pass, but it's also grown outside this range in uh, uh, um, Anna, in Harar, Bali, as well as in the southern part of the country is also grown. And usually the seeds of Afrano, as compared to that of uh, the Ilaritem, Ilatarem, which is one of the most traded uh, commodities in the international market, where Guatemala is the leading nation in terms of exporting. Ours is a bit less uh, pungent, but whereas in the case of Ilatarem, it's a little bit uh, pungent, not only that, it's mild and sweeter flavor. So we never really uh, popularize or 
promoted this typical uh, interesting features of our uh, Cardano or Cororima. Not only that, uh, we do have the best uh, coffee. We do have a good relationship with that of, uh, for example, uh, Saudi Arabia in terms of uh, coffee exporting. But Guatemala from the Latin America, they come up with the best uh, sources of our cardam and send it to the uh, Saudi Arabia. But we don't have to utilize this uh, geographical advantage. So if you are really working on this issue, we come up with our own brand and really take uh, a good advantage or outsmart other nation in terms of exporting uh, uh, our cardamom. So even if this is the case, Ethiopian cardam collection and cultivation are important in the local market. For example, in Yayu uh, coffee forest forest fair area, one kilogram sold us around 2,400 uh, Ethiopian bird. And not only that, a study were undertaken to know about the economic return. <coughs> Sorry. Yield per hectare were much higher than a food cereal. Well, that means if you are using the same piece of land, if you're cultivating cardamom with that of food cereal, the economic rate is much higher than uh, that of the food cereal. So it is uh, economically feasible to engage with this sector. It's unfortunate that the review of indigenous uh, production practice shows a decreasing uh, trend. So in Yayu, uh, forest forest fair, Koroma is the most industrialized uh, treasure or non timber forest products. With brief this uh, background, uh, the objective of my presentation is to provide information about description, uses, cultivation, and handling of uh, cardinal plant, because it is very important to know about this plant. Not only that, the other objective of my presentation is information on what are the challenges of cardinal cultivation, particularly in Yagi coffee forest biosphere. And finally, we to provide to unlock the potential of uh, cardam violation to the large lead asset of uh, the local community, even beyond. If you are working a lot, we can come up with a very <laughs> wonderful uh, business idea to uh, generate some kind of foreign income, even for the countries. Source of information to present uh, my topic, we use briefly survey that, that's in the social economic survey that we use. Uh, for collecting uh, for the previous uh, presentation. We also refer some kind of uh, literature review, uh, which are published uh, locally and internationally. Just very briefly, Kororima or Afram Karoma belongs to the ginger family in Grassi. It is native to Ethiopia, and not that it's also native in Tanzania. It is a herbaceous uh, plant, that means it belongs to a grass family, but it's perennial. It can be living more than one year. It might reach one or two meters in height and has elongated and pointed leaf like bamboo leaf. Yeah, this is the leaves of uh, cardamom. Well, the flower is very much attractive for uh, bees, so cross pollination is mainly mediated by the activity of bees who act as a pollinator. But when it is a fruit, it is loved by it is eaten by monkeys, so the natural acid dispersal is mainly done by animals such as monkeys. So they do have a role in terms of uh, propagating these plants in the wild. For us, fruit are indecent, that means they are not open to release its uh, seeds. It's fleshy and shiny green in when it is immature and turning into bright red. And it's favorably grown in warm, uh, moist environment and like some shade. So that's why it is mainly uh, grown in Yayu coffee forest. This is the uh, rhizomes which are running along uh, uh, horizontal on the soil surface. These are its root and this is a dry uh, pod and this is the seed. With regard to its use, it is a basic food item in the diet, and hence it is extensively used in the Ethiopian uh, cuisine. As I've said before, the most significant component of cardamom is it contains uh, volatile oil, which is uh, camphory, a sweet and aromatic spices. The seeds are mainly used for ever all kinds of uh, sauces prepared by the Ethiopian woman. Uh, even if it's not the same as that of the Arabian or Gulf nation, it's also used in Ethiopia to, to flavor coffees and tea. Not only that, it's also one of the uh, recipe in Nether Kiwi, that means uh, uh, butter with a spice platter. In Kitfo, this is one of typical uh, traditional uh, food in Ethiopia, that means Romance uh, food uh, with uh, hot salt, with hot stuff like Barbar, nah, sorry, Mita. It's also used in uh, Shuot, that means a puree of uh, uh, flour, uh, chicken flour. Ch chickpea floor. It's also used a flavor of special kinds of uh, bread. Not only that, it's an 
can be used medicine for both human and animal, animal elements. So as a, it can be used as herbal medicine, usually the seeds are used as a tonic, a carminative and laxative. Not only that, Coroma could also serve as an important source for biological soil conservation. As I have shown in the previous slide, this rhizome running uh, horizontally along the soil surface. So it's a good source of uh, biological conservation, soil conservation. The fruit, usually in the wild state, it starts bearing two years after uh, emergence. But when it's domesticated, the fruit maturity may take three or two, five years. This is because of environmental uh, shocks, because it is grown outside this uh, natural environment. The capsule mature and ready for harvest at 10 to 15 days interval over an extended period of six to eight uh, months. In the wild state, uh, cardamom or coronal fruit could be collected throughout the year because you will find a different stage of maturities which are grown in the forest. Yeah, you call for spasphere, harvesting may occur between October and February. This is one of the peak season of uh, uh, coffee collections. That's why people are, when they go to the forest to collect coffee, they're also parallelly collecting uh, Korema when they come across. Korema harvester woke up for up to three hours to access the wild. This is typically those individuals who are willing, who are purposely go to the forest uh, to harvest or to collect this, they may work three, more than even three hours to access the wild food. And it is most important that you need to harvest cardano when they are physically uh, mature. With regard to the pre and post harvest handling, they have to be homogeneous in color for a specific stage. Not only that, they have to be free from insects or physical damage, otherwise the quality will be uh, deteriorated, especially if it is infected by insects it might affect the healthy ones. So we need to be careful when we are collecting the uh, fruit. Fruits that are fully mature have a dark green colored rind, that is the color green, this is uh, when they are mature, and black colored seed. When they get mature, they look like this. The pores are picked when they are ripe, this is obvious. Harvesting and at overripe stage leads to loss of the green coloring in the rain, especially in the international market. This is one of the best uh, quality indicator. It has to be the dark green coloring or uh, skin. However, absence of quality-based pricing in the local market, uh, people who are harvesting are just, people go to the forest, are harvesting for respective respective of their uh, physiological uh, stage. So Corima harvester typically supplies, and these are the casual workers, they just simply supply whatever they found in the forest, usually in under it, but the local trader and domestic harvester who are purposely uh, collecting uh, the Corima, usually dried or uh, semi-dried before they brought to the market. And sun drying the fruit on raised bed are the scientific recommended method. And however, drying method in Yayu coffee forests usually involved with spreading the fruit, like you have seen it in this uh, picture, on mats, clothes, plastic sheets, sacks, which are left in the sun. So whatever they uh, found, they bound the type of any kind of uh, material, they just simply spread it on the, whenever there is a sun. But this type of uh, uh, sun drying is not a recommended one, because as I have said, it was usually it has to be done in a raised bed. Because of this, they are vulnerable to soil, dust and uh, moisture which are affecting uh, the quality of the uh, fruit. And because of this, most of the time, uh, people are uh, brought into the house and hanging on the wall and use some kind of uh, fire or use the smoke to dry it. That's why sometimes you feel some kind of a smoky taste in our uh, Kororima uh, fruit. And we need to frequent turning of the capsule is required because of uh, uniform uh, drying it. Otherwise, if you left, uh, if you without any turning, it might not uniformly dried. It's unfortunate that the cloudy weather and frequent rain during drying in Yai Coffee Forest is one of the challenges. That's why they put the fruit into home to drying it. So once it is dry, the cured capsule can be stored in double quality packaging. So it can be stored even for uh, more than a year. This is a usual uh, recommended post-harvest handling uh, mechanism we need to take care of. What are the challenges of cardamom production? Usually the production system and collection of uh, Corima are in the wild forest. It's not really widely domesticated. And because of this, collectors are expected to compete with uh, wild animals, not only with wild animals, but also themselves. 
because whenever they go to the forest, if they see this uh, Corarima in the forest, they just simply picked it up, irrespective of their physiological maturity. And as I've said before, collectors have to walk a longer distance to get access to this uh, uh, fruit. Collector pick fruit, regardless of the mature state, this is especially the case of uh, casualty workers. And even sometimes those individuals who are purposely going to the forest, they also collect uh, a immature stage because they are competing with the wild animal. One of the major challenges in the production state is uh, disease. Uh, pest damage and uh, climbing age, particularly again, irregularities in the rainfall pattern have its own impact in uh, flowering and fruiting phenology. At processing stage, as I've shown in the previous slide, uh, drying technique is one of the major challenges. People are not really careful about drying uh, harvested coralium. At the post harvesting stage, the practices are extremely uh, traditional, so the quality is deteriorating. Not only that, lack of proper post harvesting handling practice is also another uh, critical uh, challenge or so factor the fact that affecting carbon production in the yeah, UK for transfer. Oh. Problem of marketing stimulus is also another challenge. And lastly, a little investment by the public sector is also a challenge. Particularly, much emphasis is given for coffee, where in fact it is true, it is important to work on. But if you are really uh, investing on giving much emphasis on carbon production, you can really benefit a lot from this uh, plant. With regard to women participation in cardan production, usually uh, women participation are mainly limited to caring and uh, segregating. And they are also involved in management practices. In one of the nursery sites we visited, there is a clever individual who are really propagating cardan and sold it to the interested farmers. So in this uh, nursery, women are mainly engaged in weeding and watering of uh, cardan. The other most critical challenges for women participation in cardan production is household responsibility. As I've said before, women are mainly interested in taking care of uh, their house, fetching water, collecting firewood, and preparing food, yeah, because of this, they do have uh, time burden. Not only that, inaccessibility is also one of the major uh, challenge. For example, this is a Gabba River, which is found in the IUK forest. They need to cross to have access to in other parts of uh, the forest area. So let alone for women, this is really hard for women to travel or crossing this river and uh, collecting uh, this uh, fruit in the wild state. Not only that, because of this, there's also a physical safety uh, concern. Let alone for uh, women again, it's not really safe to cross this river because there are also wild animals. At the same time, there are, might be notorious individuals who are really tempting our women. On the other hand, access to formal and distance market is also one of the critical challenge uh, for women because this is again interlinked with household responsibility because they need to travel long distance to sold uh, whatever they collect with a little price. But if they do have a shortage of time because of this household responses. So these are some of the major or critical challenges for women participate in the cardan production in IU coffee for sportsphere. So the way forward, as I have said before, this uh, uh, treasure is not properly exploited and developed. And not only that, the lack of support doesn't provide an enabling environment to sustainable use of uh, cardan production in IU coffee forests. Even if there are all these uh, challenges, the local communities and rural households, including women, have the benefit by collecting uh, Corarima from the Yayu yeah, for Sposphere. So one of the most important uh, things we need to consider is domestication. Not only that, commercialization could offer a realistic solution to benefit uh, the communities, particularly uh, women. So if supported, women are, this is our survey that indicated that women are willing to engage in domestication, but no corresponding programs have been initiated yet in the area, be it by the government and non-governmental organization. So we need to work on agricultural awareness and technical sticks, and also adoption, particularly women-friendly agriculture. If again competing with their household uh, burden, then it might not be sustainable. So we need to find out women-friendly agricultural production system. Not only that, we need also to work on uh, value uh, chains to utilize maximally. So for this, the public and uh, private sector organizations should facilitate effective intervention program to provide uh, technical 
and technical assistance is not uh, sufficient. They have to have some kind of financial uh, support to begin with the business. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairperson. And, uh, and thank that's you, that's uh, Dr. Jonas, uh, again, for the nice presentation about Corarima, uh, the most important but underutilized resource in Ethiopia, in Yayukofi, in Ethiopia, in the country in general. Thank you so much. So now uh, I didn't receive any question in the chat room, but we can proceed uh, with questions, comments for the presenter. The floor is open. So uh, with this, uh, I personally, as a moderator of this uh, webinar, I thank you all participants for the active participation in this webinar. Uh, thank you so much for those who have uh, 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 given us their co questions and comments in the, for the participants. And uh, thank you so much for my colleagues, Dr. Tatek and uh, the, Dr. Jonas, for the excellent presentation. And uh, uh, thank you, Osrea, for facilitating and hosting this uh, webinar. With this, uh, we conclude today's 11th uh, webinar of the Ito Latin Coffee Community of uh, Practice. And I thank you all participants. Thank you so much. With this, we conclude it. Thank you, Dr. Obalan. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Obalan. Good night, everyone. Good night. Everyone. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Ciao. Yeah. Okay. Good night.